I'm Ruben. And I'm Emma. And this is our tiny home. I've been talking about it for years in my family and we wanted a, a cheaper option for living once we got married. I ran it past Emma while we were still dating and she thought I was crazy because I'm six and a half feet tall. There's no way the roof can fit in a tiny house. <laughs> Turns out it's doable when you're tall. We planned it out, read all the books and watched the videos and came up with a design that we liked. Got some painter's tape and taped it out on the floor of a gym at our church. If we could kind of get a feel for what it was like. We got our trailer built and you know, got a couple years framing experience, so that helped out a lot. And then I started framing in December, which is a bad, life, a bad choice because we had a pretty harsh winter that year. But we got through that and I had a brother who's a cabinet maker and brothers on the farm here, so he knows a lot of electrical and that kind of thing. So we helped each other out a lot. We have a few things we change, not, not really challenges, but something you learn from this one and you do different the next time around. So this is our tiny house. It's a do-it-yourself build. Completed uh, about six months ago we moved in. It's a 28 foot custom built trailer, eight and a half feet wide and within the legal limit for transporting on the road. So we kept it to 13 and a half on the height. Board and batten siding, and then we got custom barn boards from my brother. Planed those down and got those on there front and back. We have it hooked up here to electrical, internet, and water supply. 240, 50 amp coming in here with the wireless cable water running inside this insulated pipe here. And that's got a, a heater cable wrapped around it for the cold Ontario winters. The breakers are 50 amp. Heating is electric, stove and oven, it's all, all electric. It's kind of our storage area. We have um, electrical panel on the left there. And in the back we have our water heater, our internet set up, and then also our gray water drainage coming out there as well. Overhang on the back and the front, we've got two feet. So it makes the, the front and the back 32 feet. And that gives us more loft space at the back and a big shelf in our bathroom, which we'll, we'll see in a bit. We have our gray water drainage in here and we plan on putting in a a garden back here, a spot for fireplace, our hammock set up and everything back in that corner there. The prevailing winds here are from the, the southwest, so we have it all skirted up on this side and we're working on doing the front as well. It helps keep our floor nice and warm when the winds start blowing and so far it's been, it's been really great. Welcome to our little abode, and come on in. So this is the entryway to our little house. We have our stairs going up to our loft, which is our bedroom. We have our closet up there, as well as our queen-size bed. So it's about Four feet tall, works well for Ruben and I that we're able to uh, sit up and not hit our heads. Took one of these Ikea bookshelves and we turned it sideways and turned that into our main clothes storage. A metal pipe that we turned into our hanging clothes closet. It's really nice and warm. We get lots of the heat that rises up. We have our window here that actually looks out to the local airport, which is awesome for Ruben, who is a pilot. So our stairs going up here, we have them functioning as storage, as well as our little pantry space and our entryway closet. So this is our living room. We have a perfect two-seater couch. When we have friends over, it fits them as well as Ruben and myself. We have our desk here that Ruben made himself. It's pretty, pretty incredible, if I do say so myself. So we can 
that's it and do most of our work and stare out our window here. We get most of the morning light all throughout the day, so a pretty good spot to be in. We just have our Dyson heater, which pretty much warms up the whole place and it keeps it at a pretty good temperature throughout the day. We are coming into the kitchen here, so this is mostly where I stay at. So we got our uh, wall oven as well as a uh, four burner electric stove top. We have the uh, island, which also turns into our breakfast bar. And then we come over here to our uh, fridge. It's a very tall fridge. It's perfect for uh, Ruben and myself. It's pretty narrow, quite spacious for uh, how narrow it is. Our uh, ceiling fan that we have is a uh, plane prop. It does work pretty well and we run it mostly in summer. It helps cool down the place a little bit more. For our bathroom, it's actually raised up about three feet. Underneath the bathroom is our storage, so that's where we have our water tank and heater. So we utilize the stairs as a shoe storage as well. We have a fully functioning washroom, our shower, and our sink, and we also have a composting separating toilet, so it separates solids from liquids. It's kind of a weird concept, and I wasn't too sure about it from the beginning, but it works perfectly for us. And then we have our washing machine here, and we run that a couple of times of a week, and we have a line outside where we dry most of our clothes when it's good conditions, but we also have a little folding rack in here as well that we just use for clothes. Take your time to think through design, plan it out, lay it out on, on a floor somewhere and, and you can stand in the space, feel mm -hmm. the space. We really yeah. like that we did that. When we did that, we were able to kind of rip off some of the tape. Okay, maybe I don't want a fridge that is 30 feet wide. <laughs> Just, you know, change things around. Challenging at times, you might hate it at times, but the, <laughs> the end product you're, you're yeah. gonna love. It's a great place to live. That's true. And when you built it yourself, it's it's that much better. Yeah, yeah it feels like a big accomplishment to be living in what you were working in just a year ago. Yeah.